All right, today is 8th of, of November. November 2014, we are live. Welcome to our broadcast. It's humancolony.org. Mm -hmm. And we have our regular Saturday webinar open to general public. Uh, I know who gets first, how they comes first, serve first. How do you say that? First come, first serve. First come, first serve, yes. And uh, also we have uh, for people who didn't weren't lucky enough to get into the into the screen, uh, you can from outside you can post your questions in question and answer application. So on the left of your video, which is live, uh, there will be participate in discussion. Click on that and you can submit the questions. I will not generally look at them, but I would invite my helpers to look at them and read them aloud. Okay. Um, okay. I don't have any special invitations. <coughs> uh, you know, Jesus Christ is always welcome. And mm. other than that, everybody who we love is all, always welcome. They know that. Um, he's been very popular in private sessions lately. Lots of people are asking for Jesus. Yay. Oh, here we go. We got nice. more people coming. More people. Hi. How you doing? Yeah, everybody can unmute themselves and say hi. 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 Hi, hello. Hello. Hi. hello. We need Sorry, more chips. That's okay. It's my fault. I was running late to the shower. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew you were How coming you? though, so yeah, because awesome. yeah, he wrote me a note that said you were on your oh. way. It, it would be awesome to talk <coughs> with someone from the oh. colonies, like Douglas or James or someone. That's okay. Good. That's good. Cool. Bye. Um, I also have a request for either Takur or Lakesh to come in. Okay, they're always welcome. Yeah, they're they're the two most popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, he's getting you a chair. Hold on. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you, man. Lakesh, Takur, or Fandorian. You're next to Arian, I guess. That's okay. I want to put Jim in the middle, but that's okay. Oh, why would Jim is in the middle? Oh, that's okay. That's you can show up. Just for energy balance. Oh, okay. You said your energy from out there. Yeah. Jim, introduce everybody. All this, oh, you can't. Okay, well, you have to move the. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, starting at the end. The, oh, boy. This is Kim over here. Kim. Oh, you can't even see Kim on there. Oh, no, I see. Oh, yes, you are. There you are. And then Arian, and then Barbara, and then me. And I, I don't know who this guy is. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's Max. <clears throat> He's not here right now. He's here in spirit. So. I don't know. That's Do, okay. No, that's good. All right. oh, We're I'll good. I'll take a screen. Oh, that's okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so hello, um, we have Don, uh, Angela, right? Angela, hey, we have Liney, oh. nice to see you live. Here's somebody else coming. And I need another hello. chair. Yes, Francine is coming. We're starting to get a lot of people on this side as well, so. Yes, oh, we are all turned off. <laughs> we all turned our phones off. Yeah, I turned it off. Okay. The cops are sort of I wanted to tell you I'm coming, but I'm really late. This okay, that's okay. Arian, this way. Barbara. <laughs> Arian. Yes. Yeah. Um, and she. Pretty soon we'll, we'll need to rent an auditorium. <laughs> Yay. 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 Although letting her get it to you. She goes here. All right. Yeah. I was letting her have room. Get here. Oh. I just need to adjust the camera, right? Oh, I, I was, I'm, I'm too angry, right? Yes, you're too angry. Oh, yes, <laughs> I'm agitated. I like to be in control. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. oh, everybody, anyone? I need everyone with space in the camera. I mean, yeah, Hello. Success, successful. So, mm -hmm. hey, Angela, hey, mm -hmm. Liney. Mm -hmm. Oh, who is Farm Spa? That's uh, Sean. Sean? And I'm much love to all. How's everyone doing? Hey, Sean, I got my mic to work. And who's Galactic? Mm -hmm. That's good. Sabrina. 
Hey, Sabrina, okay. you're galactic now. All right. And my mouse doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And that's Caitlin and Casper. I've never seen Casper before. Hey, Casper, nice to see you. You're Birdie, Birdie, and Cat. Hey, Hi, I'm you. Oh, thank Hi. you for showing your face. Hi, how are you? Hey, Casper, welcome. I'm good. <clears throat> good, thank you. You, uh, you know, if you have a chance to ask questions, go first mm -hmm. as a new member. And I don't think Angela ever asked them any questions on the on on uh, on. The, she and, only asked once, one hey, time. Pegasus, hey, Pegasus, you made it. Last time we missed you, but your messages were mm, sexy. I know. I <clears throat> Hi, Roxy. Welcome. Hi, Pegasus. How are everybody? Welcome, new guests. Uh, yes. Francine, uh, him, and Arian. Yes. 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 Does everybody know who everybody is here? They know Francine over here on to my left, your right. Yep. <clears throat> <clears throat> So who else do we invite? Uh, people from everywhere. Where um, mm -hmm. who else do you want to invite to speak? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. For your sake, this is Kim, Arian, and Barbara. Yeah. Yep. Right. Hi, how are nice you? to meet you. And but you Buddha. know Francine. Francine. Buddha. Buddha. Maybe Buddha can come. The Buddha. Buddha. Oh, he didn't finish his um, <coughs> chakras yet. I'm oh yeah, here. there's two more. Yeah. And I have questions for him on. Um, uh, he spoke about sex, so I have wanted to expand this. Okay, very good. Topic. You'll come again, I'm sure. All right. Um, I guess that's anybody else. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I had a request. Yes. yes. Uh, someone from a uh, canine race civilization to come in. Oh yes, I remember you asking for that. Yeah, the canines. Where are they at uh, again, Pegasus? Sirius. Okay. <laughs> well, they're uh, from Sirius. Well, Sirius, Star, yeah. Sirius is called Dog Star. So mm -hmm, logically, mm -hmm. they would come from. There, Actually, I uh, asked them to come, and also the the uh, guy from Orion. He hasn't showed up yet, so but he's around all the time. He just hasn't come through. Mm -hmm. I guess he's waiting for the right time. Oh yeah, <clears throat> of course. Yeah, Pleiadians and Orions. Uh, they didn't speak much mm -hmm. yet, except except Kenjin, of course. And uh, Engine, right. we want to speak, yeah. to speak more to Pleiadians sure. from era, era yeah. culture and Orions and hybrids from hybrid culture. Yeah, right. Tepes speaks a lot in personal sessions and he's a blue Pleiadian. Hybridization, they mix uh, human alien hybrids. From way. <clears throat> from there. Nothing present. What do you mean? From now. From now. Yeah, present cultures, human alien hybrids. You yeah. heard about abductions. Abductions that were done by Yael and Zetas and other aliens, and they hybridized us and them. Some of the hybrids were placed here, and some of the hybrids still live out there and are members of their societies. And they have mixed culture. They have a little bit of human <laughs> culture, but mostly it would be their culture. Aaron I just and wanted to clarify and yeah, yeah. I have Palladian in me, but it's a very low percentage. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. technically I'm considered a hybrid, but not in yes. the, not in the fashion that you're talking oh, about. Oh yeah. Right. You're talking have, about. right, exactly. That's, so what, that's what I wanted to clarify. Yes. Hybrid to what degree, level? Oh, it's, this it's, is yeah. By I mean, conception. Yeah, there is no no okay. the borders are fuzzy. I mean clearly there are hybrids from this culture, there are hybrids from their culture. And our hybrids from their culture who walk on our streets and pretend to be humans, right? Any, anything like that here? Yeah. Always when I see somebody who looks like a hybrid, tall and not very human, I want to ask and say, are you a hybrid? Are you from up there? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wanted to ask Kim before we start, how do you check up went? Uh, yes, good. They just looked up very healthy under the scope. So, good. Yeah, thank you so much for your I had a healing with Jim for a very serious appointment, so it went well. Very well. Good. Oh, good. Very good. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. It wasn't me, it was them. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. We got a bunch of requests. Let's see if uh, who comes. I'm not sure who's coming.
I'm Douglas. <laughs> I was just talking to James. Um, What's new out there? Well, they're working very hard on the different things on the colonies. And um, many of you ask questions when you get there about the sabotage, etc. Um, it, it was rather extensive and um, it caused a lot of grief. So uh, at this point, they're still rebuilding it. However, there is some question whether they'll be allowed to use it or not because of government knowledge. Um, but that's the biggest news, I would think. However, I have I have other news. Oh, yes. uh, I have pretty much set my sights on visiting all of you to see you in person. You may not have known it was me, but I have seen all of you in person that is that are in the England area. So um, they've allowed me to uh, check you out in your non-holographic form. So that's pretty cool. Why would you do that? I just wanted to see what they looked like in their human form. Because they look a little different in holographic form. You see, holograms have no blemishes or no, nothing is imperfect. They're, you're your perfect self in your spirit. Uh -huh. So I just wanted to see everyone with their actual haircuts and things of that nature. So what was the difference in behavior? Is uh, the person out there very different from the person here? Is it more like higher self speaking there? Yes. Yeah, actually, I was going to mention that. Yes. Uh, there's a, a there is a different action. You in third dimension. You do your third dimensional things, in in your holographic form. When you are on the ship, you are just much more calm and pleasant. And many of the times when I saw uh, some of you on Earth, you were agitated and moving about and in a hurry and things of that nature. And um, on the ship, you're so calm and so beautiful, and the, your facial expressions are so different on Earth. It's just re that's why I wanted to do it. It was sort of my own little study. So <clears throat> I like questions from everywhere. Yes, in questions. Hello, Caroline. Hi, <laughs> hi, Douglas. Hi, Liney. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. Um, I just want to say hello, really, and um, was I much different to what you've seen on the colony? Actually, you were not that much different. You were a little different. You were, uh, do, you were very busy. Uh, on, the, on the colonies, you tend to be very attentive in listening to what's being said and things of that nature. And uh, in your home, your home life, you're very busy. You, you move out about a lot, so... Um, you're, especially when the children are home, you seem to be all up, out and about and doing things and picking them up and busy, busy. Okay, interesting. Have you seen Laura as well? By yes, I've seen Laura. Yes, of course. All oh, right. Okay, because you probably want me to ask that as well. So. <laughs> what did you say? I wasn't sure of what you just said. I uh, said so she probably wanted me would have wanted me to ask that anyway. So um... yes. Oh, Laura. Uh, Laura is actually uh, very interesting. She does a lot of she looks she does a lot of thinking when she's working on the computer and things of that nature, and um, she does work with her mother a lot. So, oh yeah, yeah, she keeps her busy. Um, we wanted to find out about the, um, the holographic because obviously um, we're like no blemishes or anything in holographic form. So um, how do they actually do that? Is that um, that's, it's not our spirit going there? How, what is it? Is it like a Well, it actually is partially spirit, yes. Um, we couldn't remove your entire spirit from you or else you would pass. But um, they do use a holographic form with some spirit in it because it, you have to have some spirit to have the activities and understanding and return with the knowledge that you do. So it is quite an interesting setup that they have. So um, understandably, 
it's quite sophisticated and I don't particularly understand the whole thing but it, it is quite sophisticated and it is something that they have perfected over the last oh, 30 years or so. When you uh, visited folks in England, uh, did you do it <clears throat> using alien technologies or you just walked and did it by yourself physical? I did both actually. Uh, for some, like um, when I met Rawi and when I saw Rawi, it was in the physical, but when I met uh, Laura, it was in the spiritual, for the holographic, because she was at home with her mother, so I was she was with her mother so I had to do that one sort of holographically but that's alright either way I can still see plainly what they look like in their human form so they didn't see you when you used technologies oh no they didn't see, they saw me in the human form but they didn't know who I was and they they did not see me in the holographic form because I I would not permit that so yes so when, but, they, when they saw you in physical human form, mm. you were yourself without any camouflage, right? Correct. Oh, good. Oh, yes, and I walked by, and I I was sitting on uh, at a table, and, you know, sometimes you just uh, know when people are going to be there. Right. So how did you find them physically? Did oh, they... that's easy. I can find them through the colony like that. Oh, so you use technologies <laughs> just to find them, right? Yes, that's all. So who guided you? That was like someone who guided you. Um, oh well, yes, they. We. I. I knew the actions of a typical day, so th the chances of me running into them was very high, because if I didn't see them one day, I would definitely see them another. Yeah, but so. you know, doing the sneaky stuff is kind of spiritual. Like when you oh, see them you? and they don't see you. It's not sneaky. <laughs> oh, sneaky is something different. I wasn't um, sabotaging them or doing anything to them. I just wanted to see them. That's not sneaky. But I'm not allowed to be seen with them. So it's it. I have to do it that way. That's the only way to do it. If I wanted to see them, I had to see. You know, it was just my curiosity. So. Okay, do you think to look at look at them? Yes, they looked at me, but they didn't know who I was. Oh, did they give you permission to look at them? I looked at them in the colonies. Why wouldn't they give me permission to look at them on Earth? I'm not in the shower. Okay. I'm not looking at them in the shower or anything like that. I'm not looking at them in their private times. Uh, I'm just looking at their regular daily life like everybody else in the world. I see. So why wouldn't they have permission to be part of the world? All right. More questions? <laughs> Caroline, were you done? Oh yeah, I just want to say much love to you, Douglas. Much love to you, Liney. Charming. She, it's a charming group of people, really. Uh, Sean, you're next. Sean! Hello. Hello, Sean. Yes, Sean, I visited you as well. Because you're not that far away, really. <clears throat> you're in Ireland, so... Okay, he had he had typed something over here. Ah, what did he say? Uh, he sends his love. Thank you very much. I send my love right to you as well. Um, and then he, oh, he just had a question for Lakesh, so I don't I don't think you uh, can answer that. All uh, right, yes, Lakesh, he comes holographically to the colonies, but he is not really part of the colonies at all. He does no training or anything like that. So he does say hello to Tukur and Ben Tim and if if they're around or whoever is around. Too, he says hello to me as well sometimes, but he does not stay very much. He uh, actually learns about the colonies and then he's on his way. So okay. <clears throat> he um, is welcome there in holographic form, but not his planet does not permit physical form to be present. So he does not do that. Yes. Um, can you explain further why does the government knowing... Um, well, if, if they come to your place and you reappear in front of them, um, that could be a big problem. Right. Um, if they know the schedule, if they find out a schedule, 
they will definitely uh, take you in for questioning, and that could be dangerous to some people. Right, but if we don't have a schedule... You don't have it. That is what we're discussing now here. Uh, everyone has an opinion, and uh, not all of them are the same. Uh, the uh, Pleiadians are against, but the, and the Octorians are against, but everyone else seems to be uh, for, for it. Um, the reason why the Octorians are against is because they are so secretive and protective. And I'm not quite sure why the Pleiadians are not so... Inter they're, they're frightened as well, I believe. Uh, but everyone else is willing to give it a go or a chance. You know what I mean? They're willing to give it a chance. Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because if, if I guess if we if it's done randomly. Yes, I think that it could be done very well. I mean, they're not going to be looking at every single person, not every single. If if they're going to do that, that's going to take a lot of resources, and I don't think they have that much resources to give over to this particular. Uh, uh, plane of thought, if you will. Um, I believe they will just pick out particular people that they know for sure will go. Right. Um, <clears throat> the because others... there are those of you out there that go more than others, and you know who you are pretty much, I think. Yeah. Um, Prana wanted to know if if he's still going to the colonies? Yes, Prana, you're still going to the colonies, uh, but not as often. Everyone is not going quite as often since they're working on technology. They're putting more uh, uh, hours into that, uh, but they're still doing some trainings. Um, uh, right now, it's mostly with telepathy and not with languages, and, most, and also with channeling and not with languages there at all either. But uh, the telepathy and the channeling are, are moving forward still. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Sinaida also wanted to know if um, her Liren baby is has been born. I can check that for you. I do not know. Hold on one moment. Can you check for mine also, please? I do not believe that either one of them has been born yet, but they are in the incubation period. What they okay. they call it incubation. It would be a pregnancy, really, and it's really not incubation, in my opinion. I I think of something totally different when I think of incubation. So, okay. uh, hold on one moment. Okay. Yes. They're, they're neither one have been born. They'll be speaking to you privately about both of them. So, so. Okay. All right. So when you say, so they're not an incubation, they're not like... Uh... It's a pregnancy. It's not an incubation. Oh. But they consider it an incubation period I, before, you know, like uh, the term comes from uh, being hatched more than being born. So... Um, I would think of it as more of a pregnancy. Okay. In most oh. cases. Now, reptilians, yes, incubation might be correct because they are they are carried in the body in a, a certain form and then they are surrounded by a thin shell when they're born and then after that it the, the shell is dissolves. And that would probably be closer to an incubation period, so. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there was... Oh, uh, I don't know if, if you can find this out. Zenaida, one of the entities had told her that maybe she had an orb, that she had an orb, but she's not sure. One moment, please. Zenaida? Oh, yes. Yes, she has a, an orb, yes, that is true. Okay. Um, it, it, you... It's not fully activated yet, but it is at about 45%. Can you tell me why? Because I know she's going to ask me. <laughs> 
It's for balance, understanding, and uh, keeping things in perspective. She's going through some things that uh, pull her perspective out, and we would like her to stay focused more. Okay. All right. Uh, that that's good. Thank you. Yes. Um, Gabriel, you done? Yes, I'm here. Hello, James. Hey, Douglas. I'm Douglas, yes. Yeah. I spoke to James, but I am Douglas. <laughs> you did that last time we spoke. I know. I, I'm always talking to James, and I, it's the first thing, because we, we work very closely together. Okay, do, do, do I use the orb at all at the colonies? At the colonies, you don't really need it. You're in, you're in a different form, a different state, and the orb stays within the physical body. Okay. Yes. Do, do you know if they have re replaced the orb yet or not? No, it hasn't been replaced. Uh, they'll speak to you about that later. And yes. actually, they uh, will speak to you on Sunday. Yes. Sunday. Do you have anything to say more to me? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm do fine. Do I enjoy you when you come. You you're a jokester. You have a lot of a lot of humor for everyone. So, and can you share how many people go to the colonies? Because oh oh, from from Yukolo, many about sixty or seventy, but from outside of Yukolo, there is also about thirty or forty that go to the colonies because they are aware of the colonies without going to Yukolo. So that's interesting, or human colony, I should say. Um, I call it Yukolo. I like that word. But anyway, um, there are those outside of the colonies that go as well. Yes. Thank you for the info. I hope to talk with them on Sunday, Dan. Ah, very good. Caitlin? Oh, um, hey, Douglas. How are you? I am fine, Caitlin. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, so, did you see me at all, or no? You're not. You're not in the English. Oh, the Eng okay. United Kingdom area. So no, I haven't seen you in person yet. I could if I want, but I I just wanted to see those around my own uh, culture in, in the flesh. That's all. It was a, a curiosity mm -hmm. I had. To see what they actually looked like, uh, what kind of clothing they actually wore, because many times when you come to the colony, you choose different clothing because you because you feel differently there. Do you understand? And so that's when you're in that kind of situation, you'll choose an outfit that's more ethereal. You'll choose an outfit that makes you feel more powerful or more energetic or whatever. And it, I noticed that. Uh, some of you wear alien clothing when you come to the uh, the colonies, and so I just wanted to see what you look like in your human form. Ah, okay. Yeah, I was just curious because um, when you mentioned that whole thing, I was I was kind of like, well, I have seen a few people that are kind of suspicious like that. Like you just kind of get that feeling because they randomly uh, yes, uh, I'm not a suspicious type I'll be <laughs> drinking tea or I'll be reading the the paper or whatever you want to say uh, the news um, and I would just casually glance and smile or whatever <laughs> so you wouldn't go up to them and be like hey how's it going but like no just... no I, I don't <laughs> um, slap you or do anything like that and say hey brother or whatever <laughs> Uh, although I I'm tempted at times to make myself known, I'm not to to do that at this time. So I do not. Oh, so you're still in your um your human form? It's just for safety for me. That's all. Okay. And for for those that I speak to as well, because the government does know who I am, pretty much. And they don't really do anything about it because you're not really out they there with it. Me, they watch me, observe me. They don't have it. They've only talked to me once, and that was quite a while ago. And I'm, it doesn't seem like they have anything really to go on. So, mm. well, the, well, the English government at this point. So yes, I mean the 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 covert operations that they have there. So, men in black as well. Men in black. 
Uh, but they're not part of the government. Men in black are not part of the government. Men in black are pretty suspicious. I've encountered one before, so I know what yeah, you mean. They're interesting people, yes. They have, <laughs> they have an agenda. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I already told Jim about my experience, but I, was just, I just wanted confirmation about that. Was that the people from the colonies taking me? Well, they were about to take me? Actually, yes. Um, you're one of the few that looked out the window and actually saw the ship. So, but that's all right. It's, it's not a problem. Uh, yeah, well, it was just funny because it, like, I thought I was hallucinating for a second, and but like I blinked my eye and I was like, gone. And I'm like, what? And I was like, no, 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 no. I just totally saw that. And then I just remember, like, I didn't really expect well, it to happen. No, actually, and you're aware of uh, many more things than you realize. I mean, your subconscious has stored so much information about alien things. It's interesting. De extraterrestrial things, I should call it. I don't know. They don't care what you call them, really. So, uh, no, no. They understand that it's not in a negative form. So. No, it wasn't. I, I just... Can you really give world them world a word? World. Can, you, can you just be like, hey, next time you take Caitlin, and if she's aware of it, can you just be like... Tell her she needs a message beforehand, because that was messed up. That was so real that I almost peed my pants. Like, it was, like, crazy. Uh, they would have probably examined that. But um, that's all right. Yes, uh, actually, they were um, surprised that you were aware, so that was part of the, the problem. You got up before they finished. You were very sensitive to the drawing of it, so... Well, yeah, I mean, it felt like a magnet, kind of. It felt like one of those movies where you're being taken just randomly, but, I mean... Uh, I, look, but you were supposed to be asleep. It wouldn't have <laughs> felt that way, uh, because how can they pull at your spirit when you're using it at the time? You, I mean, your, your consciousness, when you're using it fully to look out the window, it, you, it would be like a pulling feeling, yes. So, um... And they couldn't take you then because you you were in fully engaged with your body. So. Mhm. Mm it was still fun though. I mean, just like I would still I wouldn't mind being conscious still. You know, like just because it oh, felt. Oh, really that like... is a dream of theirs, really. <laughs> well, yeah, true. Uh, so. I can dream though. A girl can dream. Yes, we all can. Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for answering my question. You're so welcome. Yeah, very welcome. Mm -hmm. um, if there's nothing else, I oh, think I'll return. Oh, you have a question. Is there many people in the waiting line there? Uh, what do you mean? No. No, okay. there's just one more question from Prana, and that's it. All right. Oh, Prana, go ahead. Um, he, I don't know if you can answer this, but he wanted to know how come um, he feels that he hasn't gotten any visitors and that he's not channeling so he would like to know why that's happening uh, sometimes they give you a little rest period before they come to you there is no need for them to channel through you at this moment so they'll, they'll come to you I'll, I could find out more specifically what what is going on if you'd like but uh, one moment I'll, I can ask to care if you'd like um, to see why you're not being activated as much. But uh, perhaps it's just a rest period for you. And um, there are times when there are certain uh, things that need to re-establish themselves with you be between uh, channelings and uh, movements between the ships. And, and if they detect something uh, physically wrong, then they will not take you for a while. Is there? Have you had any uh, physical ailments? Uh, I don't think he has. Um, All right, I will find out from Tukur. And um, just a moment. Uh, it's just a, it's a, a slow period on the, the ship as well. And not everyone is channeling right now. There are others of you out there that are not channeling and usually channel more so it's just a slow period that's all not a big thing it will come back okay thank you all right so 
Uh, what, what am I wearing in a colony when you see me in the colonies? You ask for different kinds of clothing when you go there. Most people arrive naked, and well, all people arrive naked in their spiritual form. So, and then they ask for particular clothes. You usually like to dress in robes. Uh, you seem to be very comfortable in loose-fitting garments, and um, most of the time you ask for robes or lo something very loose-fitting, but you usually don't wear pants. You usually wear robes or gar garbs that flow. What color? You like uh, the bright colors. You like uh -huh. very bright colors. You like the yellows, oranges, blues, very bright. Bright green as well. But you see a lot of green here on Earth, so you always say, oh, I like that color of green, but I just was walking through the forest, so I think I'll wear um, yellow today, or orange. Interesting. I, actually, I would like it. I would like it. Yeah, it fits what I would like. Um, oh, did, did they meet you in the colonies? Oh, yes, many times. Did they meet you recently? Um, it was a couple weeks ago, yes. What did they say to you? Did they send any message to my physical self? No, you just were saying, hello, Douglas, how are you? And you were uh, very chatty and uh, said, why don't you let me remember this? Why don't you let me remember this? I go, it's not up to me. It's just the way you are. So um, you're, you're very adamant about remembering things, and um, it's not happened for you, but <laughs> I, it's not my fault. <laughs> my intention, when, when I go to the colonies, my intention is to send messages through you and others directly to myself. I see. So like uh, a painting. Did they tell you any book painting to send to myself? Um, no. All right. I don't remember you saying anything about a painting. However, you did uh, send uh, say things about music. Uh, you talked about John Lennon a bit, a bit for a while. So, and um, there was a song, Imagine, that you liked very much. And there was a song um, from the Beatles that you, you were very into at that time, so. Okay, I have a question. Yes. How does one know when they're being activated? What do you mean activated? Well, I you heard the terminology you used it with prana, that he hasn't been activated much. Um, well, that means he hasn't been put to use. Um, he's a channeler, and he does other things as well. There's many, usually many beings around him, different species and things of that nature, and they've taken a rest. And so he's not been activated for use at this time. Um, but it, it, he will be activated again in the future. They call that activation because they use people to get the message to the world, to become part of the system, to spread information. So, But he's not been used recently. I, I don't like the word used. It just sounds so common. But... Um, so activated is a better term that I use. So because I don't like to say he's not being used right now, but he'll be used in the future. That just sounds really common to me. So, so if one starts feeling physical changes in the body, is that a sign of? Yes, physical changes in the body are uh, activation of usually hybridization things, uh, things that would work in with you. If there is something that you are going through that needs that kind of energy, it's activated automatically. So, And so it helps you out in that form, calms you down a bit, calms you down a bit. Uh, for most humans, uh, they get very excited about things and, and it just calms you down so that you can analyze it better. Just that kind of thing. But not always. Sometimes we... You, for certain kinds of excitement, just let it rip. You know what I mean? But um, the uh, but for those things that you need to be analyzed, it will kick in and help you calm just a bit so that you can think about it a little better. Um, Jürgen, um, did you meet Jürgen in the colonies? Uh, Jürgen or Jürgen, uh, he is a nice new member, very active, very knowledgeable. Jürgen, yes. I met Jürgen. So, um, He's very, very intelligent, nice guy, um, willing and really wanting to learn. So that's a wonderful thing, yes. Very anxious to learn. Wants to actually transform himself in some ways. Uh, so he asked very many questions. I don't know if you know, if you can 
yeah, we, you... we spoke. I answered some of his questions already. They're in his subconscious. The, the answers to those questions will come about when they're ready. So that's good. So, all right. I will be. Is there any more questions? I, I think question. you should jump out. Oh, go ahead. I Could have I, a question. Ah, uh, yes. Go ahead. I wanted to know if I hit uh, an orb. Um, just a moment. I'll check. No, you do not have an orb, but you do have protection. Um, you're very much surrounded by aliens, and they are protecting you. They, you're in an area where it is very nice for them. So it's uh, a beautiful thing, actually. You get the benefits of it. You get the benefits of their fourth dimensional energy much of the time. And things are moving in a good direction for you. You, ha you have uh, moved rapidly to in a good direction. So um, they are helping you to continue to move that way. Do you understand? In the colony? Yes, very much. Oh. That is all. Thank you. Love you. Love you very much. And uh, thank you for calling me. Um, Hello, Douglas. Just one oh. quickie. Yes. This is Hayan. Can can some 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 of us look reptilian or any other species? Oh, you mean on the colony? Yeah. If you have hybridization in you that's activated at the time when you are brought to the colonies, there is representation of that. Now, I don't say that it, it's in your face or whatever, but there is representation in your being that that will show that you have that hybridization, yes. You do not look like a reptilian, however. You do look like your third dimensional being, what you were born into. However, there will be signs of hybridization. Perhaps a mark on your shoulder or something. You know, it, it's not always obvious. All right. But Thank no, you. I don't think that I've seen any humans come into the colonies as reptilians or any other beings other than their third dimensional selves that they were born into. Yes, yes. And would would those would it count like fourth dimensional? <laughs> I did not understand that. <clears throat> is the colony is it fourth dimensional? Yes, for the, yes, for the most yes. The, you uh, when you are there, you are not in the third dimension. Correct. They take a part of your. They take the look of the third dimension and bring it to the fourth dimension because that's what you look like in four. Third dimension, uh, spirit-wise, oh, it's hard to explain. However, yeah. you do um, look better. Everyone looks a little better. There's no blemishes. There's no uh, imperfections in you, and you look as your perfect self. Whereas that's why I wanted to see you on your Earth in the earthly form, because sometimes there's blemishes and marks and different, uh, different things that would uh, make you different. So I don't know how to say it. All right, I'm going to go now. Thank you very much for being with us. And you gave me a great idea. Now I want a robe to, to be here in, in a big robe, maybe color. If anybody can make it for me, uh, I would prefer like beige, light beige, light yellow, that sort of thing. Yes, yellow. You seem to wear a lot of yellow. <laughs> Thank yes. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day here. And I will, I will talk to you again sometime. And I'm going back to talk to James again right now. So um, he, we have to discuss uh, several different things. We work together with Randolph, and uh, we do a lot of things. So say hi to all the colonies from the ground team from us. Oh, no problem. They're actually listening somewhat. So I will talk to you later.
Hello. Hello. Ah, it's been a while. Is it Lakesh? Yes, I am Lakesh. Welcome, Lakesh. Hello. Hello. Lakesh. Hello. Yes, I came in rather weakly, didn't I? I didn't scream as loud. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very soft hello. <laughs> yes. It should have been a very loud hello, but I, uh, you know, machinery, whatever. How is your life? How is your granddaughter? Oh, she has grown so much. She is very intelligent. She started her first class. Oh, it's such a wonderful time. Yes. We spend as much time together as we can. But that is good. Yes. And how are all of you? Good. Good. That is good. I know that there are questions for me. I know there are questions for me. Out there, there are questions. Yes. Sean wants to know if you've read what what he wrote you. He wrote me? I did not see that. I'm sorry. Um, where did you write it at? Did you read what I wrote about you? If not, it is in the... Ooh. All right, back... Oh, I will the, try to find it. I will look for it. Bedroom. Well, I, in his bedroom. Oh, ah, okay. I see. I will look for it then. Thank you. Okay. okay. I have not been over there for a little while. It's been very busy up here. I have. I am finishing up a class myself, so I'm. I'm uh, working very hard to get that under my belt, so to speak, as you would say here. So, um, it's good. Yes, I'm happy. But um, okay. I have not visited Earth much recently. Okay. Um, well, I have you here. I have a question. In, yes. In 2012, yes. Um, I channeled some drawings. I mean, my eyes were closed, and there were like hexagons, and there yes. was like a galaxy. Yes. Um, can you tell me what that was? Who am I speaking to? Sabrina, sorry. Sabrina. <laughs> um, Sabrina, you were drawing grids, energy grids, and the reason for those energy grids is you did need some energy at that time. Okay. And even on paper, if you would draw them out, automatic writing, I think you call it, um, yes. you close your eyes and do the automatic thing, and it comes out of your psyche, this will bring to you what you need for the moment at all usually almost always in fact and you will need to read if there is any words with it as well but if you drew an energy grid then you were definitely one of two things you needed the energy at that time very much or someone that you were channeling needed the energy very much so that they could bring that to you because these energy grids uh, can be very uh, geometric. Not always, but sometimes. Yeah, because there were, and, and the other ones were like steps, and then there, I also drew a galaxy, and they kept talking in Pleiadian. They were saying something uh, about it, but obviously I didn't understand. Oh, yes. Oh, Oh, definitely. They were speaking to you, and that, for you not to understand, is quite all right. The very power of the words will help out. Do you understand? There's some phrases and words and uh, sentences that are very, very powerful, whether you understand them or not. You can hear them, and they, they bring power to you. Just like the ohm brings a, a great power to the room and connects everything together, um, certain vibrational sound pieces are, can do the, the exact same thing. Vibrationally, it can actually connect you to a power source. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I still don't know how the galaxy fits in there, but... Um, it is all right. You will, okay. I don't understand that either, but um, what kind... Was it a spiral galaxy? Yes. And then they get pointing to a certain section of it. All right. That's um, probably where they're from. Okay. That is probably where they're coming from. They're just giving you an idea of, of where they're from. Okay. All right. I, would, I, I sense that uh, they just wanted you to know 
and if you would look that up where that is, you would know that section of space probably has a name or, or probably has a star system that would be familiar to you. So, um, and maybe not. Maybe that's why they showed the spiral galaxy. I'm not sure. There's many, many be beings in the spiral galaxy. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Lakesh. You're and welcome. welcome. Um, who is next? Me. Okay. Who is me? Hi, Lakesh. Ah, uh, hello. How are you? I'm fine. That is good. Have you mated with anyone lately? Um, no, but I did have an experience a few months ago where I awoke. It was a physical experience. I awoke from uh, sleeping and I felt this being laying next to me and she had her arms wrapped around me and I held her hand. How many yeah. arms did she have? Two. Ah, okay, that's good. Continue. I couldn't see who it was, but when I tried to move closer, she disappeared. Well, the mating ritual had been finished. So she was giving you the final goodbye, and then she was gone. So that is good. You you seem to ha attract um, off-world females for some reason. Uh, but that is all right. Um, it is your desire to meet as many of them as possible. So, um, I was the same way at your age. So, but not with off-worlders, mostly with my, people of my own species. But that is all right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Um, um, I could tell you her name. She was a Pleiadian. She was. Yes, it was a Pleiadian female, yes. What color was she? I couldn't see who it was. It was black. I, oh, see, she's, she had a nice blue tone to her, but not the color of, of my species, a little lighter color. But it, it, it was definitely Pleiadian. <laughs> her mm. name was Caesar. 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 Um, I was also... Um, I wanted to make a request to um, consciously, uh, physically um, meet uh, or have a physical experience with an extraterrestrial. Oh, that will happen. Oh, no problem. <laughs> as, as they see it, they will send anyone they think that you can possibly mate with. So um, it will because it is a wonderful experiment for them as well. So, and you are so willing. Now this one, yeah, uh, this one, it could be any experience. It, it doesn't have to be a mating one. I see. I understand. And so do they. Yes. So, but you, you prefer them to look sort of normal, human sort of thing. But um, there's going to be one that doesn't. Well, I prefer. Warning you ahead of time, there's going to be a, a, a green one that's not, not exactly human looking. You might find her um, not compatible with uh, your excitement level. But, um, you, but we'll see. In fact, you might like her better. I'm not sure. But. Yeah. You know, uh, yes. Well, I prefer to see an alien in their natural state. Yes, well, that's she will come in natural state. Yes, that no problem. But will I be awake? Will I be conscious when it yes, happens? Yes, there will be a time. Yes, you will be conscious. Yes, but it won't be tomorrow. Or this is in preparation, so do not expect anything right away. But um, perhaps another of your uh, dream states. But eventually, yes, you will find one in the flesh. I was also wondering if you got my telepathic message. Which one? Uh, there was a one. Of, there was. You sent me love. You sent me um, a, a picture. And um, was that you that sent the picture? Um, what was the picture of? It was a picture of a female. Was not that you? Not sure. 
Ah, I'm not sure. Because you could have sent a picture of a female. <laughs> what did you send a picture of? Uh, I don't remember sending any picture. Well, ah, well, then it wasn't you that sent me the picture. Perhaps it was Sean. Uh, um, my telepathic message to you was, um, um, I wanted to know if you knew any females on your race that were up with humans. Ah, so maybe I did get a picture of a female. Uh, because with that message, there is a female in it. So, um, at this time, our species has been sort of cloistered, if you will, on our planets. We haven't been going anywhere except for doing spiritual things and doing communications through astral projections or holographic projections, whatever you want to call them. But soon our race will be coming out of the cloister period. We, we're doing a self-study about the way of our culture and how it got to be exactly where it is right now. And that was an extensive study that is coming to an end. But um, yes, we will be um, moving off the off world uh, eventually, but not quite yet. And so a female uh, might be interested. Yes, there are a couple. Did you get that? Yes. Did you understand it? Yes. Ah, very good. So, I went the long way around to tell you. So, anyway, but I, I wanted to put some other stuff in there. So, I'm glad you got that because it was sort of garbled. But, um, anyway, did, I'm glad I answered your question. And, yes, I did. It was you that sent the, the vision of the female. You were trying to picture what one of our females looked like. So, you, the, that image came through. So, oh, yeah, that was me, I remember. Yes. It was you that sent the picture of the female, yes. And that's what I received. I, I received that image and that you were uh, trying to picture the female and that you were uh, wondering what they were like and if they were passionate. and There, there was many thoughts in your mind, and all coming through at once. So perhaps I didn't get the other part of the message, but I did get the the idea that you did want to meet one of our females. And they do want to meet you as well. Hello, Lakesh. Yes, Gabriel. Yes, I'm wondering, I've been sending you a lot of thinking of you every time I go to, before I go to bed about... Yes, you have. Yeah, thank you very much. You, you are so kind and sweet. Thank you. And I, I'm sorry I cannot visit more often, but uh, and Kalish has been um, not doing very much as well. So, um, did you have a question? Yes, I, I'm wondering if it's possible to, for example, that you channel me or Kalish channel me. Explore there your. Many times after, of course, contact. Well. Earthlings can channel aliens. Aliens can channel Earthlings. It will be a time of much exchange, and off-worlders will be connected in a way that they have never been connected before. And so, yes, that that is very possible. Yes. Yes, and I I was thinking of you and I meeting, and I felt like we had like similar strongly connection in. Yes, we, physical. we we do have a strong connection, Alta, but you're not blue. That's a, five points against you. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh, I I do like your spirit. I do like how you think and your different thought patterns about the body. You think about your body a lot, and it's interesting. I learned so much from you. Okay, so you hear me every time I go to bed, then, or yes, you think about yes, I I hear you, yes, and I try to use my sonic as a symbol. Ah, uh, yes, I was just going to say that sonic is blue, five points plus. So anyway, and but anyway, yes, sonic is a wonderful. I understand your connection. Do you have anything else to share? 
Uh, about the or... time, except for your orb is coming. I checked on it the other day with Takar, and your orb will be coming. And it will be spectacular. It's better than the last one, actually. Yes. And then yeah. um, I, I the like... The last one's still there, by the way. And I want to say, like, the connection with your world. So share mm -hmm. that with everyone of yeah. your world that you want to share. Yes. I am fine. I am not. I did not quite understand that question. No, I mean, other beings in your world, your sensation is interesting to me. Ah, yes. Oh, yes. You you feel the con sensation of Kalish many more times than of me, but he is he is an interesting channel. His experimentation with channeling and being in the human body are very interesting to the planet. And he's going about it a totally different way, and so um, it, it's become a little bit of a um, an interest for many because he's not doing he's not coming right through and, and channeling uh, information right at this time. He's actually going in and experimenting with different parts of the body and how they react to him. And um, you've you've experienced that many times. And also, he's going. He hasn't been into your mind as much, but that is, will be probably part of the next part of his experiment. After he's gotten through your body and experienced how each part of the body reacts to his um, stimulus, and he will. He has reported that, and we've learned much about the human body from that. So. Yeah. His his work is very interesting and important to us, and so they have asked him to continue his work until it is time for him to channel through you. And then he will know your body better than anyone else's on Earth. Of course, everybody is a little different, and the chemical reaction, the chemical um, mix is a little different. And so, therefore, he will know your mix. And we will know your mix as well. So, but um, it is very interesting. We we assume that there will be many similarities in other humans, but we uh, we we know that females will be different. There will be different chemicals there, but um, we f assume that the chemicals that they found in your body will be the same, only in different proportions than. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, uh, yes, then others. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you for that. Yeah. And, and I've been feeling that he wanted to do it in another way than you want to do it. Exactly. Very much. That's why it is why our people find his work important is he's doing it a different way. He's moving through you in a different way and he's uh, exploring your body. Yes. Yes, and I would like to explore his body as well. If I'm I allowed. See. Okay. At least if I'm allowed to do it in some parts. It will happen, yes. All right. But not right now. First he has to explore and map out yours. So that is the first thing. Thank you. Who is next? Angela, I think. And who? Hello? Who is there? Angela. Angela, are you there? I'm trying to unmute my mic. Yes. I can hear you. I heard you. Where did you go? Uh, connection. Angela, are you there? Her connection was broken. Yes, she she seems to have back connection. Um, when okay. one thing is engaged on her computer, another thing does not work. All the energy is brought to one portion of her computer and taken away from another. This is not working properly. Okay. Um, I think Caroline is it's next, so. We'll let her come after Caroline, see if she can come back. Yes, all right. Hi, Latesh. Hi, Liney. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am good. You're good. Very good. 
I want to say hello to you. Um, um, I want to also say hello to um, uh, a dear friend on the colonies. They know who they are. All right, very good. Um, yeah, well, and um, just when am Mute I going myself. to colony next? What was that? When am I going on colony next? Uh, I'm not sure. I would have to ask to Kerr. However, let me find out something real fast. Thank you. Because I can zoom right over there. In this form, it's easy to move around. So, um, you're not scheduled till next week. Okay. Next week, yes. Right. All okay. right. They have you as tentatively Friday or Saturday. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Much You're fun. welcome. Not, not a problem. Hi, Ian. Hi, Ian. Hello, Lakesh. Hi, Ian. How are you? How are you, my friend? I am very well. Excited. I am very excited. Many things are happening that are good on my planet. And I see that there are good things happening within your human colony as well. So I am very excited. Very good. What is your question? Mm, so I have a cat now. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Has it, uh, is it, does it correlate with the, the uh, with the Lyrans? Um, not that particular cat. However, they can put an implant in it and it will react differently. It will react more like a Lyran cat, without the, the great intelligence, of course, but it will have the same kind of uh, feelings and survival techniques that a Lyran cat would have, which are similar to human cats, but a little different. They've been through a lot more. What happens if we speak Liren to cats? Do they understand more? Actually, there are cats that do know Liren, but there are some cats that are not part of the Liren. Usually an orange cat will be closer to Liren. Oh. Okay. So, uh, yesterday... Or the day before, I thought that the cat was uh, touching my back, and then yeah. I there turn are around. Some and cats that do know Reiki, believe it or not, they do know Reiki, and they are they they uh, there has been documented situations on your planet where a cat will jump up on a table and put their arm over a certain part of the body and heal that part of the body. It has been documented. You don't have to look it up if you don't want to, but it is documented that some cats have healing ability. Yeah, I've actually seen a video like that. Ah, cats you have. A baby. Very good. Yeah. Well, yes, some cats instinctively, instinctively have healing ability and know how to use it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But, but the question that? was that I, I thought it was putting... It, it was touching me. Yes. But then I looked around and she was on the other side of the room. I see. She was projecting energy to you. Ah, interesting. So it, yes. wasn't it that That's someone interesting was in creature. the room? Yes. What was that? Couldn't it be that someone else was in the room? No, I have a feeling visit? that the cat was projecting their energy to you because they wanted to just know that they did thank you and care about you. This is a th very thankful cat, by the way. Mm -hmm. This cat is thankful that they are with you, yes. Yeah, I'm very grateful as well. Yes, you help each other immensely. With It's an emotional tie right now. You're, you're getting closer, and um, that bond is getting closer, yes. It's strong. Yes. And I believe that the cat sent you a touch. And I believe this cat is one that can do Reiki, if if so desired. So, do you have pets? Oh, of course. As they we do. Like or do do you let them go free and come back whenever they want? Um, we let them outdoors because that is their natural environment. 
it's difficult for them sometimes to live totally indoors. Even in the intelligent ones um, thrive on the atmospheric, you know, parts of our world, and um, find it very necessary to go there at least once or twice a day. And that's not to to um, go to the bathroom, as you would say, not to release themselves, but it is part of their grounding. They have to stay grounded. They have to be with the earth for a while. Yes. A little bit every day. And the atmosphere out there is, is different as well. So it is a little bit harsher outside. Uh, are you telepathic with, with them? There are some pets that we are telepathic to a point with, but the ones that I have are, no, I, I just take care of them. Okay. Ruth asks about Arusha. Yes. Is she, is, is she still around, Ruth? Yes, Arusha is very much around, and she will be um, coming to her again. She visits her every now and then and asks, uh, whispers things to her and um, helps her with her job. Gives if if she notices there is a little bit more strength than she thought she had in some situations, that would be Arusha helping her a bit. Mm -hmm. Is she a teacher on that planet? Arusha no. is a teacher, a spiritual guide. Um, she is well well renowned. Okay. L is wanting a confirmation. Does she have she been promoted in some way in the Ooh. colonies? L, Elena. Oh, Elena, how are you? Um, you are definitely a person of note in the colony too. You have uh, some leadership ability there and leadership uh, credentials. Yes. And you've been working there uh, probably two nights a week for a while now. Okay. Do I go to the colonies often? Yes, you do. Thank you so much. I'm passing. You're welcome. Um, Hello? Cass, um, Noha, can, can we let... Um, Casper, Hello. since this is his yes. first time. Casper, okay. yes, go ahead. Hello there, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Exciting. Yes. Um, I'm relatively new to uh, human colony and to speaking oh, to next okay. terrestrial. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to know whether I had prior to all this, uh, any contact to extraterrestrial beings during my lifetime here on Earth? Or? Yes, you have. Um, actually, you were drawn to human colony because of your experiences. Yeah, I figure. Yes, and um, you have had more than one, and, and they were very interesting to you, and some of it is blacked out from your memory, Yeah. but it was not all unpleasant. It was not all unpleasant. Yeah, I think there were some gray beings involved in that. Yes, yes. Uh, as a child? Yes, absolutely, I yes. I remember having these... I was sometimes afraid um, of extraterrestrials taking me. Yes, but you, once you got there, you weren't afraid yeah. anymore. Okay. But you were afraid when they came to get you. Yeah, exactly. But, and when they, they came to get you, you were very afraid. But once you got there... You don't remember much from yeah, that. I, I but, don't remember anything, actually. Just these faces yeah, but, sometimes come up, and I'm afraid of these faces. But, but I could they, forgive them at this point, I think. They, they actually calmed you down, and you did, didn't have a really bad experience. Yeah, That's I, I, I believe that, too. Um, but you were frightened. That was the yeah, worst yeah. part. But they treated so, you well. They did, not, they did not cut you open or anything like that. But, yeah, um, yeah. They did, they did talk to you because you had some very interesting thoughts as a child. They mm. were interested in your intellect. 
Your fourth yes. dimensional energy was much greater mm. than some of the people around you. So they, yeah. they they found you as a person of interest that they wanted to speak to, and actually they actually evaluated your brain capacity. Wow, I, I love them. Yes, I really love these beings. Um, yes. there was another question. There was a mark on my upper leg. Yes. On the right leg. Uh, as a child, I thought this mark is from extraterrestrials. Was it really like that? Yes, actually okay. it was. I can't tell you what it was because that is not for me to say. But it was from an extraterrestrial. Yes. Okay. And also you do have an implant behind your right ear. Oh, yeah. I, I've had a dream recently about that, actually. Yes, it's just recent. Exactly. Yeah, there was a soldier putting this in my ear. Yes. Oh, in this dream. Remember, okay, very good. Um, I'm I'm just telling you that because since you've come to human colony and you have given permission for some things, they yes. have given you the implant, and they are going to be sending you a a uh, uh, someone to watch you. So that hasn't happened yes. yet, but it will happen soon. Wow, well, love to all these beings. Ah, uh, yes, that yeah. is from Brookfick near. That is from yeah. them. I I learn all about this from all the okay. things. I am have some access to their mm -hmm. their uh, information. If it's pu if it's public domain, there are some things that are not public domain. But okay, do that. Yes. Um. Also, there was a recent dream about like a meeting where we discussed a hell lot about Gaia and the planet Earth. Gaia it's is in trouble. at in places. Yes. yes. And it was a sort of flower of life place with some purple colors. That's the only thing I really remember of that. That's wonderful. Beautiful. Yeah. There yeah. was so much discussion with so many beings. That's yes. all I remember. Obviously, yeah. you went to a council meeting of some sort. Yes. I'm not sure what that one was. That's not on public access. Hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, okay. Um, I think that's all I have to ask, and I send so much love to you all, and well, my heart has started beating so strongly having this connection uh, as a physical human being to all of you. Thank you. Much love yeah. to you. And, and Actually, short question. I have a, do I have a strong connection to the Pleiadian energy? Yes, you do. Oh, okay. I, I felt that many times. Yes, you do have some connection to the Pleiadian energy. You have a. There is someone that is alive in the Pleiadian culture right now that you yes. have had an other life with. Oh. You um, in one of your past lives you were very much close. Very what close. is? It? Can you give me a name or? Oh. Uh, well, it is. In this life, it's a male. It was a female in another life that okay. you knew. The Elgara. 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 I think that the last part I can't pronounce. But it's Elgara, and then there's something else. But um, it's like Elgara. But I can't pronounce it. So um, it's, just say Elgar. He'll, okay. He'll okay. Well, that's very exciting. Thank you so much for all of that. You're welcome. Have a very good time. Hello. With you. Hello. Who is that? Noha. Hello. Who is this? This is Noha. Ah, oh, Noha. How are you? Lakesh, I missed you for a long time. I missed you too, but I do visit you now and then. But I haven't Great. been to the earth for a while, so it's it's been a little while. You're right. I'm in Asia. I'm in Asia, not in Europe. Yes. Yes, so you can visit me anytime you will. Uh, my question is this time, I've lost my tennis bracelet, and I know you're interested in jewelry. Have I lost it in a different dimension? Can I find it, or is it lost forever? It's lost on Earth, but I'm not sure you'll find it. Uh, but I will take it. I will, I will go see if I can find it for you, but I, do, I cannot do that right at the moment. Okay, no problem. No. But okay, it is lost on Earth. I know that it is not in another dimension. Thank you, thank you. That's good. Uh, the second question: Any developments for me regarding the colonies two and four that I'm willing to develop my abilities and intuition? Uh, you have been to the last colony you were at was number four. They are working with your channeling abilities. Your fourth dimensional energy is 
they spiked it up just a little bit. Um, it was it had gotten low. You were involved in many three dimensional things, and uh, for some reason that used up some of your fourth dimensional things. I'm not quite sure how that works, but um, it it maybe it just dulled it a little. But they're giving you a little more spark of fourth dimensional energy. How's that? Great. I'd love that. I would love to be in a in a constant. State of, of being in the fourth dimension because I feel like we are in a yo-yo, you know. Yes. Um, third. I'm third all the time. Make sure you remain grounded to the third dimension. It is in. You can stay in the fourth dimensional for a while, but you cannot constantly be there, because uh -huh. you were born into the third dimension, third density. You, you're to survive. You have to be in the third dimension uh, more than in the fourth dimension. And in this life. So understand that, but you can be in the fourth dimension as high as maybe 40% of your life, but you you must be named, remain grounded and connected to it so that you can bring that information back to the third dimension and make it worthwhile. Because the only reason to go to the fourth dimension at this person point in the third dimension is to bring back knowledge to the third dimension so that they can learn and grow and ascend into the fourth dimension. Any other thing that is there is non-compatible with the third dimension in you can't bring objects back or you can't bring um, information back that does not work with the third dimension. If you bring it back and tell them, they'll say, oh, that's wonderful, terrific, but it will not work here. But there are many things that will work here and that's why you go to the third dimension. And also the feeling there I understand is so light and great because what it's it's like being in a different it is being in a different density. You're a lighter density, you're a much more uh, you're graceful density in some ways. But um uh, yes, I can understand why you want to be there, but you cannot be there 100% of the time. All right, but you know, uh, the, the, the cash that I'm free, that you can take me as, mu as much as often as you want, okay? Thank you. So, no problem. Uh, the well, third question and the last question. But I can communicate with you. What was the last Wait. part of that? The last question is, any new hybrid children on the horizon for me? Because, uh, I don't know, I have the names ready for them anyhow. I would have to you would have to check with Takur on those. Those records are sealed for hybridization. I do not I do not know I I only know the ones the things that have been revealed already. So uh -huh, I, I do not they sealed those records to me because I did not know how to read them properly and they just will not let me do that anymore. Okay, you've met my son uh, Aditya and my daughter Ali. Yes. How are they doing? They're fine. They have. Uh, I check in on all the children periodically because, as a, as a grandfather now, I am totally into children now. Um, they're just a wonder to me, and uh, it's. You see, you have to understand that between mo have, having children and grandchildren, there was many years of Earth years that I did not have any youngsters around me in that form and so um, when getting the grandchild and they grow up so quickly especially on our planet they are, they're talking by four months so yeah. um, by your time and so their childhood is so important to me that I, I spend as much time with the children as possible because that is I, I know all different species and uh, uh, Okay. Beings have different gestation periods and different growth patterns and all that, but I love that. I love being. Lakesh, can you? Hello, uh, yes. Lakesh, Can you project them to my my mind's eye so I can see them? Can I will you do try. That? I will try to do that. that yeah. Uh, for all of us, all of us would love to see our children. I will send the I will send the images out to you. If you can get great. capture them, that would be great. Beautiful. Thank you very much. That's a really a good uh, thing that would be accomplished. Here, I'll send one right now. Great. There you go. 
I hope you can receive it. Just think, just be calm and don't be too excited because that your system will be agitated. But when you're in a state of calmness, accept the picture. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, Thank I think it's. I love you so much. Love you as well. I love all of you. A great community. I am going to. Are, oh, Barbara wanted to talk. So. Yes. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Yes. Okay. My um, female anatomy, since it's different, is it because am I being a hybrid? There is some truth to that. Yes. Uh, but your human physicality was is also defective. Okay. So that did not. Uh, I'm not sorry. It's defective? Is that is that the wrong word? Um. <laughs> It is not working properly. Okay. How's that? Um, but it is. It's not your mind that's. Your mind is fine. So <laughs> I did not mean to <laughs> make you sound bad. No. Um, the body is one thing. The mind is another. You should be happy. The mind is good. So, uh, but yes, the body is body. is working hard to stay healthy. And I will give you some energy before I leave. Oh, you can feel that, can't you? Yeah. I am glad. Yes, that was a very strong dose, that last one. Thank you. Um, it will help you out. It will balance out. There are some things that need balance there. And it will give you some balance. Mm -hmm. Your flora it was, was needing some bumping up. And there is other things happening there that I gave energy to in a good way. There, in fact, um, there is one little thing that was healed all completely. I do not know what it's called in the human system, but it was a lesion of sorts. Mm -hmm. Do you have lesions? It's, it was a lesion that was healed, yes. I have a few questions from a couple of people. Yes. Okay, um, Karen. Yes. Do you remember Karen? Okay, she. Is had, Karen? Yes, I know who Karen is. Yes. Yes. Um, she wanted to know, and this, I guess, she was asking for for uh, delirians um, to occur, but I maybe you can answer it. Uh, she wants to know that, as far as the Hindu mythology and other mythological teachings on Earth. Yes. Um, do they share any similar type of mythology on their planet? Or oh, of course, yes. There is many things from your Earth culture that is shared throughout the universe because some of these different off-world people built their cultures on your planet many thousands of years ago and then moved onward, leaving your people with extra knowledge healing abilities, uh, different things. So yes, there are many things in your mythology that do coincide with galactic things. Okay. Um, she said hello, and she said thank you. Hello, and thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, the next one is from Marco da Costa. Okay. What he was that? Marco? Yes, Marco, how are you? Okay, um, he says he's from Portugal, but he lives in Germany, and he wanted to know if he has an alien implant. Yes. Or I, will he? Yes, he does. Okay. He wanted yeah. one, and so he got one. Okay, so he's go does he go to the colonies? He has gone to the colonies two times. Two okay. times. And he, the first time he went to the telepathic colony, the second time he went to the channeling colony. 
interesting because um, he does not channel yet, I do not think. Okay. And then uh, Nisa, um, her question was, uh, she put the intentions to go to the colony. Has she visited or will she? Yes, she's visited once. And it was in the telepathic colony number one. Okay. Um, and then Thea, T-H-E-A. Yes. Um, uh, message. Um, he wants to know if there's if there's a message for him from his star sea planet, and what is his star sea planet if there's one? Who is this? Thea. Uh, yes. Thea. One moment. Your connection is with Alpha Centauri. That's what you call it. But I do not. I there is a an an individual there that you are connected to, but I cannot. I cannot read it at this time. I cannot. I know that there is a connection. It's very weak at this time, so I would have to get back to you on that. It's too weak for me to read. Okay. Um, I think that would sit for everybody. Very good. Well, I will see you later then. Okay. I do have a few moments with my granddaughter this afternoon, your afternoon time period. I have one more question. If that's okay. uh, yes. Um, when I relax and close my eyes, I see all kinds of images. Yes. Yesterday, when I looked to my right and I looked back with my eyes open, I saw an image. Yes. And I saw a, it's like a life form. Yes. To me, it looked like Yale. Yale, yes. Was it? Yes. Okay. Not sure. No, yes, it was. Was it shorter? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It was the shorter of the Yales. They look very human, but you probably didn't see the facial features or anything. You did? I did see the facial features. Was it very human looking? Yes. Very good. That was a Yale. Yes. Yeah. You saw, um, ah, there was a reason for that hesitation. What did you see? Only when there's time. Yes. Uh, yes, you saw you Gil, and they, uh, you have a connection with that Yu Gil. Yes. Oh, yes. Hi. Um, I apologize for my absence. My earth mother was dying, and I was very preoccupied. So I've been That's a, a problem. Little... We understand. Oh, thank you. And I, I did want to join the human colony, and I, I guess I, too, I want to know the, the bigger picture. Is there a projected time frame of when us um, in the holographic realm and here on the Earth plane we will have like an open contact? Well, yes, after and... first contact there will be much, much intermingling with more than one species. There will be several. After the first contact and after they get used to the original uh, contact with the Yu Yil and their friendly presence and their loving kindness and goodness and are not suspect any longer, then many other species will be introduced. The Yu Yil will speak about these species. The Yu Yil will uh, let everyone know who is what and what to expect. And then they will be coming. Yes. In the few years or well, we do not know exactly when there has to be a the time has to be right. Well, that's part of spiritual and, and there are times when it has been actually almost right, oh. but not quite right yet. They look at it differently. Human as they used to, yes. To, to... Well, the enlightenment is one piece of that puzzle. And the the subdued darkness is another piece of that puzzle. And the awareness of the religious culture will be another piece of that puzzle. The awareness of the religious culture in the sense that they no longer deny or believe that extraterrestrials are evil or from another uh, demonic plane, if you will, but as another species that God created. 
our Pope has just recently said something about that too to accept our. Yes, and he w he is being talked to by aliens. Oh. Yes, not my species, but he's he has had several visitations, and that is why his information is so pure. His information has been very pure. There was a question about monoatomic gold. Is it good for your health, and how much of it is it good for your health? Do you want to discuss gold? Monoatomic gold is like a special chemical form of gold, which looks like a jelly, I would say. I do not know about that. I will study that and let you know. But it sounds, I know that gold in our culture, the mineral is very helpful to us as well. Perhaps it will be helpful to you as well. But I am not sure because you are of a different makeup than we are. But gold seems to help many species. Gold seems to be, since gold was the original first color, basically, other than white, of course. White and then gold, it is a very powerful color. You feel well, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's good. She is smiling. She feels much better right now. Um, excuse me, Lakesh. Yes. Um, me and another person have uh, a few questions for you. Um, yes. I have uh, two. Um, you said uh, you said I would be encountering a green extraterrestrial. Are you able to tell me what race she is from? Uh, the, the species right now is not <laughs> important. Um, I will tell you later, but it's not a species <laughs> that is around here right now. However, she has found a human colony from a great distance, and she has found you from a great distance because that is the kind of species they are. They seek out relationships with other cultures. And so your very thought of mating with her was exciting across a billion light years. So um, that is what I'll tell you for now. OK, thank you. And my second question is about um, werewolves. Um, what were they? How did they uh, start? Are they just misunderstood aliens that look like dogs? There, are, There is a dog culture. That would be more of a wolverine lupus culture. Um, and there is such a thing, yes. And, there, and they have been to Earth. But that was um, very, very long ago. And I'm not sure if they have a connection with werewolves or not. They are not, they do not change shape. So that is what makes me wonder. But however, your world at the time that they arrived was in a great flux when they were there. And so it is very possible that the evolution of the seed they planted there did evolve that way. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I see. But I would have to, I do not know that for sure. That is just my guess, because I know that they have visited your planet many, many, many thousands of years ago, even one of the greater distances of time that you call time. But um, I, I do not know how that developed that way, but we'll see. I could find out for you. But thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have an, an interesting message. We all discuss um, the first contact and have dreams how it will happen. So the message is from Agent D. Interesting the thoughts on actual manifestations during the first contact. I would like to suggest ships come close to the planet's surface and let the hybrid children wave, wave to all the humans on the ground. Children are never threatening and this would blend the appearance of UFOs technologies and the greater family together in a simple yet direct way. I love that. Yeah. I love that idea. Of course, I love children. But I love that idea, and I hope... Just a moment. 
te ama yawa ta kuata sai tai tuko tu ko ko sha i am wa ka ta wa ta sha i just wanted to pass it on to decur right away uh, her eyes got very big i what, think she what, what does it signify i think that the i think that was excitement actually um <laughs> I don't know of what she thinks of it. She didn't say anything back, but she did did make a uh, quick a movement to the uh, to send communications. So a, another idea put into the pot and have it stirred. So that's good. I love that idea actually. I love that idea. Agent D. Oh yeah, it's our. Good friend, he published my interview and is very active in uh, uh, promoting the ideas of first contact. Oh, I love that idea. Very nicely thought out, I thought. Mm -hmm. I think so. So, very nicely thought. They would have to develop a ship that would be able to do that, to have them wave out the windows. I don't think they have one that has a lot of windows in like that, but we'll, um, we'll speak to them, definitely. Lakesh, I don't know if you have to go. Uh, Stephen, that just came in, would like to ask you a question, if that's possible. Definitely. Thank you. Hello, Lakesh. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Um, I was just wondering uh, about a real uh, vivid dream I had like a day or two ago. Yes. Continue. Uh, it was it was about where I was where I started off uh, in like a building where I was kind of stuck and trying to get out, and uh, I was with this one lady, a girl, and we were going around trying to get out somehow, and I was moving these knobs where the windows would go up and down, and I saw this little garage parking spot that was open, and I went out there, I got into a car, started driving around, met with up some of these motorcycle guys, one got ahead of me, and. Uh, and uh, in the cra uh, and there was a crash up ahead of me. I was still driving. I pulled over, and uh, I thought it was him at first, but it wasn't. And there was some guy that was laying on the ground, and uh, I decided to do a galactic language on him to heal him. I closed my eyes, and I did that uh, enchantment. And then, uh, then I, when I opened my eyes, he was back in the car already, and then we went to his house, and, uh, and we talked for a little bit. And, uh, and uh, she asked me, uh, the lady that was there, she asked me, uh, so what was that? Some type of uh, galactic thing or something? I don't, I don't know. And uh, I just explained a little bit to her, and, and then we, you know, we went on. And they, there's somebody trying uh, to to catch me. It seemed like somebody's trying to, uh, you know, find me or something. I just wonder if I can get more information about that. Okay, this was a dream. However, it does have significance. But it was not an actual occurrence. It was a dream with significant symbols in it. The healing symbols, the galactic language symbols, the raising of the uh, person that was injured, all these are symbols of your healing abilities. The other thing is you are trying to run from something before you find these healing abilities. There is, you are running from something that you are not sure that you want in your life right now. So you are with this woman running from something that is not pleasant or not acceptable about your life. And once that is done, you will discover your healing abilities. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yes. I, I try not to. I mean, I, I don't want to run. I really don't. Well, I mean, no. In this case, it is something that you don't want you you're not you want to get out of it let's put it that way I, I, let's not say run let's say you want to escape from it completely not run from it but find a way that it is all good for you does that make sense uh, not sure. I, I don't want I want to say but it is running in the sense that you don't want to be with it but it's not running in the sense that you don't want to just run away from it. You want to uh, heal it or, or make it into something better. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it, and you're talking about as part of something. Because 
if it's something a part of my life that I, I mean, I, 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 am, I want everything. I mean, I want, I want to explore and experience everything. So. But the, so you have to find your way out of the shell that you're in that keeps all this information, keeps you inside. Outside is a lot of things. Okay, I got you. Thank you. You're welcome. Akesh, uh, Noah asked you for a blessing to everybody. Ah. Yes. Oh, is there another question first? I have a question. Yes. I forgot it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, what about me and the colonies? <clears throat> Excuse me. Is there any information you could give me on that? Yes, I can. You go to the second colony, which deals with health and well-being, diet, um, exercise, things of that nature. However, you do not get involved with the exercise too much because you cannot. But they are talking to you about health and things of that nature. However, what I have given you oh, I love it. is actually more helpful at this time. So that's a, that is your anthem. Okay. So what I have given you is actually healed a lesion. Mm -hmm. There was a lesion that is healed. Maybe that's the pain I've been feeling. Do you feel it now? The what? Do you don't feel it now? Mm -hmm. Very good. Years ago, uh, I was in my old white Solara, and I was very awake and alive. And this alien with a with a brown cloak. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who who was that? Those were the Pleiadians. Those had oh, Pleiadians. Sure. Yes. Um, I, did you know they were Pleiadians? No. Oh, okay. They were Pleiadians, and they let you, they didn't want you to see them at first. Yeah. However, after they saw you, they didn't mind because you understood who that they were aliens, and you had believed in them before. So they actually were did not run away as quickly as right. they might have. So that was good. And they were actually uh, they knew who you were. Yeah. They knew that you are not really an Earth person. So, oh. Um, oops. It's uh, okay. It's okay. Anyway, they uh, they know about you, so that's all I will say for now. I'm assuming that any. I'm assuming that anyone that is drawn to this, it's no accident, and that we've that all had some contact or. Or there will are be. from somewhere else, or hybrid, or what have you. There is there all those that come at this point have had some reason to be here, but there will be many more that come that want to have a reason to be here. But the, and there are some of those that are here now, but for the majority, they were drawn here not by accident. But many will find a human colony because they hunger for the knowledge about what it will happen. And that is why this has started. That is why this has started is to be an ignition point for first contact in many ways around the globe. Many people around the world know about this place that you are here now. And it will grow and they will find out more about what aliens are like and not be afraid. But of course, when any being appears in front of you, you're going to be afraid. Even if it was your mother. If she appeared in front of you all of a sudden, you'd be frightened. <laughs> um, even a familiar face. So that is what we have to prepare people for. An instantaneous fright, but not an elongated fright. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be frightening at first. There's just no way around it. Just we don't want them to be so frightened that they're going to be run screaming and yelling, but that they'll recognize recognize the friendliness of the spirit. But some people's spirits aren't open. That's where we have work to do. We have work to do with that. So here on Earth we possibly to avoid frightening and we send a message first. You email, you knock on the door, you say, it doesn't, oh, it's me. It doesn't matter. It's, I could say to you, 
I'm going to appear in front of you in 10 minutes, and when I appear, you're going to jump. Because you're not sure who said that, for one thing, and you're not sure if it's true for another thing. And then when I finally appear, you're going to go, ah! Because that is your that is your reflex. Oh, scale yourself thousand times smaller and appear a little little tiny thing. Little things are not that scary. So I'll, I'll appear as the size of a pea. Yes. No, I didn't think you would never find me. You'll probably step on me. But anyway, <laughs> I can. We'll find a way. I am not part of first contact, but I do help them with. Um, their um, information and what I feel. They ask for our thought patterns and they want to know how we feel about that. Yes. And um, that is where I come in. And right. I do want to acknowledge, Lakesh, all the work that you do with us, so how you have helped us, each well, one of us. And you I want me. to acknowledge all of that. You help me as well. I appreciate you very much. So no, no asked for this. Ah, yes, the blessing. One moment. I will get in touch with what is oh yes. Oh, you've been talking about unconditional love lately, yes. Ah. Mm. May all your spirits feel very light. May you understand that the unconditional love comes from the love of yourself and God and the Creator first before it can ever possibly move out to anyone else. Be prepared to love yourself even greater. Be prepared to be like a child in many ways in the world, the innocence and the beauty of that thought that comes back from the unconditional love within you can actually purify who you are. Your perfection becomes more bright. Your perfection becomes more valuable to the world when they can understand that your vision is truth, honesty, integrity, and love. Be blessed. Know that God is bringing a blessing to you. The one called Creator, Spirit, Life, the Giver. All those different names that are you, yourself. Because you are the Giver, the Life, the Love, the energy, the God within yourself. And it is all around you and within every part of the universe. So draw on it, if you will, to make this within you grow. Love is eternal as is energy. So energy and love together, what? cannot be destroyed. May you go in peace. May you love the energy that is you and the God that is you and the person of perfection that you were born into. Bring it up and out and love it. Hold on to yourself so that you may hold on to those around you. Many, many blessings to you and the understanding that everyone is with you at all times. Everyone is with you at all times. Everyone is with you at all times. Much love and thank you very much. I felt it, really. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. I must go. Thank you, Lakesh. Thank you. Namaste. Thank, Thank you, Lakesh. It was wonderful.
Hello. Hi there. Hi, welcome back. My, my cup is under here. Oh, there. Oh. Roxy over there. Oh. I'm right here, darling. Uh, if you want to have a microphone while Jim takes, uh, you know, uh, some drink, uh, you're welcome. You yeah. probably have a lot, to, a lot, lot to reflect on what has been said. Oh, just always freaking awesome stuff. I love it. I do have a message for Sabrina. Oh, very good. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Uh, hang on. Let me close the door because I'm going to channel in. I don't want to uh, bark at it because sometimes it gets a little loud. Hang on. <laughs> Okay. What are our orbs? You can come in anytime. And pardon the delay. No problem. Anyways, Osipius gave me the whole download and I'm going to channel it for you, okay? Okay, thank so you. On, on the Galaxy, stand by. And greetings to the collective once again. This is Osipius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. Now, in this inquisitive now that you are, let's say, what was that back in 2012, that little dream I had, that little vision I had, that little download I had of that of the galaxy, which you specifically called that of a spiral galaxy. And the Pleiadians were pointing to it. What that is, is a vibrational beacon for you to tune into so it becomes what you would understand as a home base. So what you are doing, listen now entities, what you do in many of your several astral projections is you find somewhere, let's say, that is vibrationally congruent, acceptable as becoming a home base because what you don't want to do is travel out too far and not be able to tune in to back to get back to home there's no danger in that it's just sometimes you're like shit what am I doing way out here and I can't find a vibration to get myself back home so synchronistically the vibrational collective humanity we will call them is let's say put this system practicum idea into place and that idea is when you go astrally you become familiar with a toning a radio station if you will equatable in your terms that will project yourself out to that and you fine tune it and then it becomes let's say a home base running to first base and then running to second base and running to third base making all those familiar and then you come home however you add more bases you don't stay confined within that diamond idea you add more bases as you're astrally projecting going out and out further discovering and understanding relationships to that let's say density dimension idea so your Pleiadian self, you, were giving you the familiarity of where you are and let's say it was uh, given to you in that idea to know where it is in your 3D conscious mind by looking it up and finding it on what you call the hmm, observatory ideas of how they've mapped the stars. They change a lot and sometimes they're a little inaccurate but not too bad. But anyways, in that idea you go over there and visually you know where that is and that let's say it couples with your vibrational sense your conscience mind oh I know where this is because I saw it in my mind and then it automatically tuned you into that frequency of a next home base and in that is let's say that part of your Pleiadian idea and all the education and the expansion and whatever you choose to play in that reindeer game sandbox over there so to speak so in that idea, this is the encompassing idea of it, and it's the practicum that you expand yourself with little bit of tidbits that lead to further understandings until it becomes comprehensionally ununderstandable. And then, of course, your guides set up synchronistic moments like this one to give you that clarity for you to step forward into that new reality and explore that as a higher part of your unknown self. Are we one? Pardon me. Are we one on this? Are you following, in other words? Yes, thank you. I will Beautiful. definitely explore that idea. Awesome blossom, as we love to say. 
Once again, collective, our eternal gratitude, our eternal love for you choosing the most epic species of all, that of humanity. I bid you a good moment, Adone. Booyah. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. Hi. Ah, thank you. That was great. Thank you. Love You're welcome, guys. Yeah. It was just like, oh, that's cool, so here it is. <laughs> All right, let's start right. on the exit sequence. Well, first was the question, what are the orbs? Jim, do you want to start on the orbs? Um, the orbs are made especially for certain people. If there's uh, perhaps a small problem with grounding or a balance or something that can't be overcome with normal... Uh, energy and stuff, they will send the orb made especially for that person to give them the correct energy, uh, insight, grounding that they need at, for that time. Now, the orbs can be, in Gabriel's case, a, a negative energy damaged his orb and so they're replacing it. But the orb is still there, but it's not fully active, and so he has not been able to be as grounded and, and as cohesive as he was before with the orb. But after you learn the lessons of the that the orb will give that particular person, then they don't need it anymore, and it they will remove it. But in Gabriel's case, they have to remove it because it was damaged. So I these mean, orbs are there for a specific purposes and maybe to um, uh, I get the feeling that there's they're even more than that they're there to uh, actually enhance the human experience in some way and also the orb is they take the DNA from that person that's going to have the orb and then they can create the orb from that DNA. correct they they create the orb from their DNA correct all right. There are other orbs, of course. Um, orb is just a sphere, right? Right. It is, uh, you know, you can sometimes Desert. see them on photographs, on videos, um, just a ball of light of any size. Usually they are like size of the socket ball or volleyball, but uh, they can be any size. Right. Uh, if you uh, look for, just search YouTube for orbs or NASA um, videos from space station, from uh, orbital space stations. Um, these were actually, I mean, that is an amazing story. There was a, a radio, uh, amateur radio, how do you say, uh, enthusiast in Canada who uh, found a wavelength, un, 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 unsecured wavelength on which uh, satellites from NASA about 20 years ago were transmitting the video, the video uh, stream to, to NASA. So he just recorded many, many hours of those and then he just went through these images and found the videos where the alien ships were and where orbs were and some of that is now on YouTube and that's absolutely beautiful. Now they secure this channel but at the moment they weren't sophisticated enough to block it. So, so he was able to just be in his house and capture his professional television expert but but he was able to capture and record many, many tapes. So these are, and these orbs, interestingly, they are, they're bigger, they're about two meters size, estimated, you know, based on, you know, what you see, sometimes they kind of overlay with space station, you can estimate how big they are. And they have that interesting shape, the, the round, and there is like kind of a slice of pizza cut out of that, a slice of, it's a pizza without the slice. So this is uh, interesting, and uh, you can see they are pretty far. They're not dust immediately nearby because sometimes they block each other. Sometimes they block are blocked by something else moving. So you can see them pretty well. Um, I, I know Line you captured an orb or two on her video on right. her. Uh, she telephone. captured uh, Liney captured orbs around her son, um, and there was people inside the orbs. So yeah. Yeah, on the photograph, it's amazing. You can see the faces. See the faces. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah and um, it was a clear an image of a gray, or maybe a yellow gray. Um, but also be aware, you know, it's so easy to get real dust as an orb on, on a camera. 
I, I do I did it I took my camera with a separate flash and I just took what was mm, ba bacon powder no no it was flour just dry flour and just took it, dusted it and took pictures in the dark or if you if it's a foggy evening or foggy dark night and you just come out and take pictures you get tons of orbs uh, so the flash shines on the dust and you get bright round thing with a slice of pizza cut out so you can tell it apart from orb. and it also has a rainbow color it's beautiful but you know I can easy, you can easily create them just by using flash so if you're not using flash it's a real orb if it is a flash 99% this is dust flying in the air all right but you know um, aliens come very often as an orb because its orb is something transdimensional real orb something transdimensional it's a point of connection of their dimension and our dimension and point enlarged is a sphere um, it can be anything can you know um, which, which which of the I think are I don't remember uh, some of the alien ships are orbs I don't remember which ones um, reptilians reptilian are big they're about I would say seven to fifteen meters whatever trans, tra translated yeah so <laughs> fifteen yards um, size and they go in formations uh, above big cities. Uh, there is a beautiful video of Moscow uh, reptilian orbs around flying over in formations over Moscow. In Brazil, they were demonstrating their, uh, I guess, independence and that they're not afraid, they're strong. Uh, uh, they were hanging around over. I don't remember the city, but in South America and in Mexico, they were hanging around for, for weeks, so people get used to them. Uh, you can see this video a lot, a couple of years ago, lots of yeah. these videos. So orbs are, you know, it's what the basic way of them appearing here, the most easy way. They're not fully here, but they are kind of, they show their presence. And they go to very many religious areas, like... Um, over temples and different religious areas so that people will see them the orbs do they want to be recognized and noticed so if you see an orb what would you do hi orb <laughs> <laughs> I usually see them a song a nice one just a welcoming song it kind of allows us to establish a connection but you can pray you can talk to it I don't know how it would respond but you possibly it would respond telepathically, so you would send a message and then you wait for telepathic response. Wow. All right. Um, continuing our exit sequence, um, we want blessings, uh, especially uh, just in a minute. I, I have one more. I will start, and then Sabrina, are you there this time? Yes, I'm here. All right. Are you ready for you, like in a minute? Yes. Wonderful. And. I guess um, anyone is wh 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 whoever wants to go next, and maybe Roxy also. Um, also, um, um, Ruth has a question for Francine. Okay. She wanted, uh, she you channel. I mean, you you're a medium. I mean. Uh, yes, I am. Um, she wanted to know if you had ever uh, had an alien come. Well, it's funny because uh, last week when we sat in and we said, oh, can we visit? And I don't remember who was talking. They said, oh, just ask. And I had put it out there, the intention that I was open and welcoming either way, go, come, what have you. And sure enough, to Kerr came uh, to check on me, talk to me, but gave me enough memory to remember. So I can't tell you spe specifics, and just the fact that I'm here and I was drawn to this and happened to see the invitation is clear evidence to me that I've had some kind of contact or what have you. And I'm, as I stated earlier, I, I'm a, a small percentage Palladian, so I guess I go way back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope that answers your question. Francine. Yes. Do you have a tie to nature somehow? Every day. Every I day. I have the feeling I that you do. I just got there at the park this morning, 8 o'clock this morning. Okay, it's not, it's, yeah, I feel like you have a lot of um, nature energy around you. I just wanted to clarify that because you have more ties to elemental beings, I feel. Correct. I just wanted to let you know that because I feel that energy around you. 
Thank you. So they're around you, and they just want you to know that they're there. Yes, I'm very tied to the woods and the trees, and mm -hmm, I felt that yeah, very, very, very much. Max, I think Max has elementals around him too. He's very oh yeah, definitely. 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 Dwarfs, gnomes. Um, okay, Caitlin, is it two of you on the picture, or is it? That's my picture? mom, and that's me. <laughs> I want to have two or more of me on my uh, avatar from now on. It just makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. There is many of me, of course. Yeah, there. You and your mom are both pretty. Like, Thank you. Somebody said my mom looks like she's 20, but. Yeah. Yeah. You usually judge the age by eyes, and you can clearly see the eye is very young. Mm hmm Thank you. All right. Who All right. out there is going to give blessings? Okay, so I guess yeah, Max. I, I, I want to start. I want to. Max, well, then. Want to say? Gabriel and I. Say again? Max, Gabriel, and I. All right. Oh, okay. Um, so I start from. Just remembered uh, in the campground this summer, a member of my family saw an orb coming. Uh, and then next night the orb came again, and we sank to it, and um, it was sort of happy and went away. And then later, I think like Kesha or another alien friend confirmed that two these were friendly aliens just checking on us if we are safe there. And they saw some unusual activities in the campground, so they wanted to make sure we are not in any trouble. But we, we weren't in any trouble. We were just having fun there. All right, so um, Donkey. Uh, Yesterday, I was sort of kind of trying to th thinking about someone, and I was thinking that you know that saying goes very well to that person that you can bring the donkey to the water, but you cannot make him drink. So you cannot b you can bring the donkey to the water. I mean, is it familiar to you? I think it's famous from you the can Bible. Bring right? a horse to water. You can bring whatever a horse. Yeah. In Russian, it would be donkey, but <laughs> but you can bring a horse to water, and you cannot make. It drink, right. but but then I just kind of looked in the mirror and I thought, mm, okay, it's about me. I cannot, you know, I'm brought to the water, and but you know, no one can make me drink. And then I expanded it to every one of us. We have uh, so a treasure too. We have everything here at hand's reach, and no one can make us drink. It's our free choice to drink. I wish you all to take the advantage, take the opportunity to drink from this spiritual river. Yes, thank you. Gabriel? Yes, do you want a blessing in English or? Galactic language. Start with galactic, please. Okay. Toko sariki o toko to sroko to toko ra sari o toko no ta sara ta ke o to toko ruya te sariki o toko to toko roko so toko te ya ya sariki o toko to toko sroko to ta ke rika ta ke rika sroko to te ya ra o to do do da. You got that, Jim? We are all together. We are one. We expand on each other. We expand inward, outward, forever. And let's know that we are always eternal and that when we move, we move in eternity. So move with us. Move with us wherever we go and your eyes will be open to all the things that belong to your vision. Taskara katana nako soro tokolo nana kiala kiata katakasa katana nako Oskara katana nako tu sukuro kutu Oskara katana nako tu sara kiala katana na Asara katu rona Ola katana naka tu Oskaria la katana naka liako tu kutu Uro kutu sara katalia kata Asara nakata Ario sakatia la kutu tutu naku Osorona kiyoto koloko, asara katana kiyoto, osorono alaka, tasara tuno koturoso tuto naloko, loto sariala katato, asana niyoto, osariala katata, asana naloko asaki, eriono 
Osa kati. Anakata sarana. Orosutu. Os kati. Alanasi orota. Asarata. Aranaka. Una kiyoto. Osiatani. Spirit and I are one. We grow together all the time and experience everything together. We love, we reach out, we reach in, we move all around and experience the love that is us. And once we move out of ourselves, we experience the love that is everyone. And now that we are all together, and now that we are brought together, and now that we can see with each other's eyes in some moments, we gather the information and bring it to each other as a gift, as a love, as honor, as we know that we are and we can always be. But let us move out from these bodies of material things and move into a spirit that can be moving forever and not be trapped by the, the world that we see only with our human and spiritual and Pleiadian and Octorian eyes, but the eyes of the future and the eyes of everything. Thank you. No. Anybody else? Uh, I'd like to do uh, one of this, okay? Alright. Yes. Nisa nakasai nukrahmata, nukrita kasai nukrahmata, nukrita kasai nukrahmata, nukrita kasai nukrahmata, nukrita kasai nukrahmata, you <laughs> The wisdom comes as light, and a beam of wisdom is worth more than the rest of the universe at times. We know that thoughts connect, but sometimes are not connected properly. Let us now build a connection of thoughts that builds a universe of understanding and love a connection of thoughts and hearts that build a connection of community that goes beyond what any community could possibly know. We are gathered. We are watching. Rise and ascend. Sarah? Thank you. Asini we sarki ushatiya niata isa ta katushanaka waisa laini siata raki sia rushanakiya tu shataka nayasa kushi di laisa katushanaka Nanuku Haina Nakia Ushanakata Kata Husha Nayasua Naisia Lakia Ushatakaka Nia Saka Ushiakia Nia Urikia Urakai Hasia Naisia Nayaka we are also watching and weaving energy around your world. The energy that we weave protects you and enlightens you, but only if you can reach it. Reach out for us. 
Let us feel your minds, thoughts, and spirits. Your love is already evident. Your dreams are already becoming reality. You are already reshaping your matter and light into streams of reality that is potent for the future. Touch what you can and feel us when you may, but we will be with you to help you, but only when you can reach us and know who we are. Namaste. Karen, are you into blessings? Do you want to give us a blessing? Do I want to give you a blessing? Yes. Sure. In my galactic language? Yes. Okay. Soria kashanti la refa se la comanda. Indoria la santi kushompa la santaka. Ilahama. Ilahesita oroja fasanti. Shando bara pasadla. Ikora ipatala ke kambandi. Dafara mandala kosanti. I shandora mandela. I toka manda. Esarama. Let the light pierce your heart like a spear and let the energy flow out to, to one another. It is not like blood, but like a wave of energy that will engulf those who can understand the purity of the heart, the spirit, the realm that is not with you, but is with you always. Say a prayer that you are pierced and are released from your caption, captiveness. Namaste to you. Namaste. Namaste. Roxy, you there? Anybody? Anybody here? All right, I think we are done. Uh, thanks, everybody. See. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome, Slava, Slava did a lot of work on the site. Uh, it's uh, wonderful. I wasn't much on the site this week, but uh, thank you, Slava, and thank you, everybody who helped and support and take uh, care and bring your energy to the community. And I want to tell Slava that his daughter is immaculate and gorgeous. She is a beautiful, beautiful, and she's already telepathic. So goodbye everybody, namaste, thank you very much, much appreciation and friendship to you. Goodbye, namaste. Love you guys, bye thank bye. you very much. Much love, bye-bye. Thank you Jim, thank bye you Matt. Oh, thank you all, namaste. 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 Namaste.